Linux distros are starting to get boring. Every distribution now just feels like taking the bare minimum and slapping mostly GNOME or KDE on top of it. Archcraft breaks that stereotype and instead of opting for that same monotonous minimal design with consistent user interfaces, this distro is packed with individuality and character. Okay, for the first step, let us open Firefox and get Archcraft. The website is actually pretty interesting. It gives a lot of information about the project. So let's head over to the website. Just search for Archcraft and you will reach there. Uh, the first link, this is archcraft.io and uh, the theme that I'm currently using is linked in the description below or you can visit from the i button above. Okay, let's head over to wiki. Archcraft aims to be minimal. It can run under 500 MBs of memory and it only uses window managers. So it is pretty lightweight and it's loaded with again lightweight applications uh, flat pastel colors you know how much i love pastel colors and it is a very consistent user interface you might remember i mentioned it is not consistent that does not relate to this what i was talking about is the different user interfaces inside archcraft so they give you a completely different look each time so uh, i'll show you uh, later when I download and run it in my system. It's also loaded with the latest softwares with built-in support for AUR and again it's lightweight. Okay let's head over to the gallery to show you this huge variety of changes in appearance that you can do for Archcraft. So as you can see they have provided a ton of screenshots and the user interface looks really beautifully done. Uh, they look a lot familiar especially in the Rofi I think they have adopted it from the online Rofi themes that are available, but it looks really nice and consistent. So there are also a ton of window managers. I don't know how they are planning to ship them or they are shipping them. So uh, there are dynamic stacking, dialing. I guess they will be accessible while you try to install. You can select one of them, but the only way to find out is by downloading and trying it out. Okay, the download is complete. Here we have the version 24.04 and let's flash it to our pen drive so that we can boot up. I'm going to use Fedora Image Writer because uh, Balina Etcher is not launching due to some reason. Select ISO and write. Okay, finally we have booted into Archcraft and it was a bit difficult because I couldn't find any normal screen recording app on bare metal. So I have to use it inside a virtual machine and they have an inbuilt screen recorder, but it does not work properly. But if you see initially, the user interface looks really beautiful and the colors are so well matched even with the wallpaper. If you see the background color and the color of the app, it's matched very well. And you also get this cool little animation of hello. And there are three buttons. You can launch two different installers. One of them is the terminal based installer, looks like this. And the other one is, well, the graphical user interface. And finally, you have the Get Started Guide, which is basically the Archcraft help. So you can open the Archcraft wiki, tutorials, or the gallery. Basically, they are links to their official website. So if you click on them, they will just open in Firefox. The user interface looks really beautiful, like I mentioned earlier. So in the top left corner, there are some workspace options where you can switch easily. And this is currently in open box. So it's very lightweight. As you can see, uh, just Firefox is running. It's taking around 1700 MBs. So if I just close Firefox and some of the other apps, the idle RAM usage is 877 MBs. So if I open the terminal, uh, thankfully it has the key binding control Alt T, which most of the modern distros are not having due to some reason. For example, Fedora. Now, if I go for NeoFetch, which is installed by default, you will see it uses the latest kernel modern one which is great uh, of course it is based on arch so yes and uh, there are 1179 packages installed under pacman the shell that is getting used is zsh 5.9 and we are in open box currently inside xfce 4 terminal there is also a customized version of rofi i think i've seen this design before it's in the Rofi themes available online, the gallery of the Rofi themes that you get from GitHub. So 
I think most of the designs for Rofi is taken from here. I also do the same thing. They really look very beautiful. So if you check the power options, as you can see, they look a lot similar. And then we have the audio player part, which is playing some audio. And then we have the volume portion. You can scroll to change the volume. And clicking on it, of course, will mute the volume. And finally, here we have the display settings. It's not available because I'm using a monitor and obviously it is inside a virtual machine. And finally, we have the speed of the network. No battery is there, so not available. Oh, there is also the time. If you click on it, it shows the date. We also get a small dock in the bottom part. There are some nice little uh, elevating animations and looks nice. Okay, now let's check out the apps available inside this distribution. There are actually a ton of lightweight apps and mostly they are from XFC. So you can visit the menu option by right clicking anywhere on the desktop. So they have a really customized version of this menu. So inside applications, there's accessories, development, graphics, multimedia and more. So as you can see, most of the stuff are from XFC. Even if you open the default file manager, it's actually Thuna, which is the default file manager inside XFC. And it's lightweight, customizable, looks nice. So definitely it's a good choice. For the terminal emulator, they have used Alacrity, which is also, I guess, a great choice. But if you see or look into the different options available, there are sometimes a very minimal version of the same app available. So for example, you get X color, which lets you pick any color from the screen, as you can see. So for example, if I pick this yellow and just paste the color that I picked, it's so easy. I really liked this. But if you notice carefully, you will also get another version of the same utility. You also get the multicolor selection, which is basically the same utility, but now you get this graphical user interface for picking the color. And there are some other options available. You can change the color from here, uh, choose the color from the palette, and you can obviously copy the color and paste it wherever you need. The same goes for the screen recorder, but it does not work properly on bare metal. I don't know if it will work here properly or not. We can try doing a recording. But if you notice, there are actually two versions of the screen recorder. One is the default available here. You can just right click and start the recording by clicking there. Here we go. The recording has started and uh, here are the stats. Now, the RAM usage obviously will shoot up a little bit, so it will take up a bit of the space and you can easily turn the recording off by right clicking and again stop screen recorder. I don't know if it recorded properly or not. We can just open the Thuna file manager, visit videos and then screen recorder. Here we have the capture file. So it turns out the recording was done properly over here but unfortunately it does not work fine in bare metal. And there's another option available as a screen recorder. If you visit application multimedia you will get the simple screen recorder which is a nice little graphical user interface for screen recording. And you can also get support for OpenGL over here. So just continue, record the entire screen and start the recording. And here's the preview of the recording that will be available. So yeah, it obviously takes a toll on the performance. Due to some reason, the mouse now looks weird. So I guess that is a problem. Inside applications, you also get Office, but you don't get the full range of Office apps. There's the actual document viewer which is okay, but uh, if you want, obviously you can install the entirety of the Office apps uh, available from LibreOffice. Inside settings, you not only get support for the default themes available, but there's also support for Qt5 and Qt6. The default terminal is actually XFC terminal, but if you right click and click on terminal emulator, it will launch Alacrity. But if you do control alt T, it will launch XFC terminal. Now they look the same, I understand, but the thing with Alacrity is, well, you get a ton of options directly from here. So I'll explore them from the preference page, but let's now stick to the applications part. And you also get two different apps in the live uh, for the file manager. Again, from the right click menu, you can open the Thuna, which is the file manager graphical user interface. Now, another thing that I found very interesting as the file manager is, let us see if it is available, Ranger. Ranger is a terminal based file manager. It looks so beautiful. So I can directly browse here. So it's a very interesting uh, file manager. And uh, what I found even more interesting is well, you can get previews here. As you can see inside wallpapers, I can actually get the preview 
of each item directly inside the terminal so it looks really really nice okay and uh, other apps are also there uh, like I mentioned office we have already covered now there's another menu for opening apps as root so you can directly open the terminal which is Alacrity as root or the file manager as root you get the text editor which can be opened as root then we have Ranger which is a CLI file manager uh, Vim, Qt5 settings or even Quantum manager directly as root this is a very handy feature okay the screenshot utility is directly available here so you can just click on screenshot now and it will take a screenshot of the current screen now inside places you can also directly browse the entirety of home directory from here so this is music we have pictures screenshots wallpapers so everything can be browsed directly inside the menu so that can be done or if you want you can open the location inside Tuna and continue the browsing over there you also get key bindings recent files are available here and finally preferences there are a ton of customized menu options over here so just check it out here we have the open box options so you can directly select the type of menu you are looking for currently the iconic version is enabled but if you want something minimal you can go for the minimal version which is this small menu or if you want something else you can also go for that this for example is the simple version and finally one with the glyphs I think the iconic version looks the best so I'm going to stick to the default look okay next we have the compositor now it's using the original PyCom from the arch repo and you can actually change a lot of stuff from here so let us just enable rounded corners I can increase the rounded corners a little bit so let's put 10 and when I hit OK as you can see the rounded corners are there looks really nice now the problem with this is whenever I change it as you can see the entirety of Thuna is actually not working properly even if I launch new applications it doesn't work properly so this is how it looks weird but there is a workaround you have to actually right click over here and head over to preferences compositor and use X render backend which solves the issue now again everything becomes normal now previously I didn't know this what was happening behind so I had to reboot multiple times whenever I changed theme or did anything related to the compositor so it causes some problems okay we can also modify shadow settings we can reset shadow settings or disable client shadows then we have fading animation settings and finally the op option to disable the compositor or restart compositor if you want you can also edit the configuration file which will directly open the configuration file for you and you can do pro level changes inside the pycom.conf okay next is panel or bar settings so you can change stuff from here finally display or monitor options and then we have change style this is the most important part here and this will transform the look of your desktop in a second so this is the default one number three which is getting used currently which is enabled and if I change to something else for example if I click adaptive it will change everything starting from the panel to the dock everything as you can see the dock is currently not available here so it looks like this now it also changes the Rofi so this is how it looks I'm going to show you all the styles let's go to the next one which is beach this is the changed Rofi next we have easy the easy version actually has a separate uh, application menu or the right click menu in open box so the style is different again you have the changed Rofi now it's so well optimized even if you open the file manager you will notice that the color actually matches so we get here this blue color which matches with the color in the background wallpaper and also the application background matches this color okay next uh, we have forest I think forest is my favorite I don't know I just love these green themes uh, I'm not a big fan of the wallpaper but the theme looks really nice they're using the breeze icons for this theme I don't really know why breeze in general is not a pretty icon pack and uh, obviously it isn't suited for this theme okay we also get this modified Rufi which kind of looks nice hack also looks really nice they have used this wallpaper and the theme that they have used it does look like where the hacking scenes are shown it also has just this modified Rufi I probably have not seen this Rufi earlier and here we have Manhattan again different panels and everything next we have slime okay this is a light edition and here we have the Rufi which is also in light mode spark is also a light theme and you also get this nice floating dock and here we have the Rufi and finally wave 
this is how the Rofi looks. Now you do get all these presets, but you can also change everything yourself. So you can change the font for status bar, you can change it for launchers, terminal, desktop, notifications, application and more. But you can also change everything globally. So let's switch to something else, just a random one. Let's go for this monospaced font. Okay, due to some reason we lost all the icons in the top left portion. Anyway, that is all. Now let's change other stuff too. So you can change terminal colors. Like I was mentioning, there are two different terminals. You get the alacrity, which can be accessed from here and Control alt t launches the XFC terminal. Now if we put them side by side, they almost look the same. But the only difference is, well, you can directly change alacrity appearance from here. So change terminal color and you get this variety of option, huge variety of options to change everything. So let's open NeoFetch in both of these. So as you can see, we are on the XFC terminal here and the Alacrity is here. I think Alacrity is a better choice for this distro because you know, you can change all the stuff from here. So let's switch to a different color scheme, as you can see. It looks different. Now, of course, the title bar does not look different because we did not change the theme for everything. You can change the internals of the terminal directly from here. If you want to do the same for uh, XFC terminal, I guess you need to open the preferences page and do all the changes for appearance, color and more directly. Okay, you can also change the wallpaper. I guess nitrogen is the wallpaper selector and we can select from a variety of wallpapers and you get even the default wallpapers for Windows 11 available inside. Now most of the colors are pastel colors but you also have some brighter colors or some gaudy colors. The curated list of wallpapers, they look really nice with the themes. Doesn't matter what theme you're currently on, you can just pick any wallpaper and it will look nice. You can also open the Qt5 settings page directly. The appearance settings, appearance settings is uh, meant for XFC applications or like uh, GTK3, 2 and more. So if you change stuff from here, it will change the theme of the application. So if I open file manager, as you can see, the theme changes. And there are a ton of options available, all installed. So you can change to a variety of options from here. But uh, if you see Kvantum, they do not actually have the cute version of the theme inside Kvantum. So you only get the default Kvantum themes available. Okay, next is the power settings and the settings manager. Settings manager, just like I've shown earlier, will launch the XFC settings page. This is how it looks. You can change all the stuff from here. Of course, that is available. And finally, we have keybinds. You can backup and edit the rc.xml again directly by opening the config and editing everything. Or you can also display the entirety of the key menu here. There are so many options available and you can just directly get access to all of them from the right click menu. You can also display it inside this window. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe. I could not really install this on my bare metal because most of the features don't work properly. But if you want, you can definitely go and check this out. Make sure to do a dry run before you install it because some things don't work properly. So do check it out.